Hello and welcome to Structured Change. We're now on the fifth letter of the SIPOC series and we're moving to P. Now the reason we do the P last for process is we've done I for inputs, which is the artifacts, and we've done output, which actually is handed to the end customer, which are the outputs or artifacts. So what we're doing now is considering the processes that are required to convert the inputs to outputs. Pretty simple really, isn't it? What you'll find in doing this exercise is that one particular input can produce in part or in whole multiple outputs, or multiple inputs can produce in part or in whole an output. The other insight it provides you is, is who or where is the work being conducted by way of process? So often we'll have a, an ERP or an enterprise resource planning tool. I won't name the big ones, but the backbone of the organization has an information system that does a lot of the tasks. Yet for many, much of the time, we find that individuals are doing the work on a desktop outside of any particular information system. Again, this could be down to the fact is that data might be insufficient in the ERP or perhaps there's no functionality in the ERP. In either case, or in any case, top management need to understand from an assurance point of view how the work is being guaranteed to be accurate. Now, the other element of um, understanding the O is the touchy subject regarding outsourcing. When you've done a SIPOC series and you actually come through and you understand the different processes being undertaken, you can actually then do a, uh, a collection or a risk assessment against those processes to produce outputs and in a very quantitative, visible and transparent way, you're able to identify what areas that your business is taking on that someone else could do and have a better return on value or investment than you're currently doing. Without going through the SIPOC, it's a bit of guesswork. People are protective about their work and are always concerned that well, if you outsource engineering, we lose our jobs, etc., etc. The IP will walk out the door. But if you identified, for instance, there was 15 core processes that engineering did, and one of them was that took the longest amount of time, carried the most amount of risk, and really there weren't a lot of people interested in doing it, but you do it anyway, I would suggest that from a leadership point of view, that's something that you might want to consider outsourcing and remove that risk from the organization. Not only on the actual profit and loss statement does it actually improve things, but it'll also improve morale because from a top management perspective, you have quantitatively listened to the organization through the SIPOC process. And then what you're able to do is with them say, hey, let's outsource this one and that one because they're not adding value and all they're doing is creating a lot of additional effort that is unproductive or not adding value. So again, let's take a look at the P for process in this SIPOC series and see where it takes us. Let's have a look. Okay, now we're, we're down to our final letter, P for process. So we've gone through the customer, the outputs we provide to the customer. We've looked at our suppliers or who provides demand on us and what inputs that we receive. And now we're going to take a look at how do we convert the inputs we receive to outputs so here we go. How are inputs converted to outputs? Pretty straightforward. Again, we're sitting right here. Now, what is interesting here to know is that you may have listed a number of inputs here, and you may have a number of inputs that exceeds the number of, sorry, outputs that exceeds the number of inputs. There is no real true one-to-one -one relationship from input to output. You could have an input here that actually rolls into multiple outputs, or you could have multiple inputs that of course come down to one single output. It's important to note that in this exercise, you're taking pure inputs and then coming up with what are the pure outputs, but most importantly, what is the process one goes through to actually do this? Again, standard template, but we're focused on this area here. And again, whether it's done on paper, document, 
or spreadsheet is not important. Capturing in the information is. So again, we come down to the, our engineering area who have said the, the processes that they undertake are CAD management, computer-aided design, FEA, finite element analysis, CFDs, I forget what that one was, performance analysis, vibration, root cause analysis. Here's a couple here, material checks, both chemical and mechanical, and of course, document reviews and approvals. So this is what engineering have said that they do. So we've had, we started with customer, we then went to output, up to supplier, then we did input, and now we've looked at the processes by which we're converting inputs to outputs. So look, we've now completed all five letters of the SIPOC. Let's jump down to the summary of how we bring it all together and what it means for you in terms of your change journey, your asset management system, but also to aligning your organizational strategy through to value in, in delivery to all stakeholders.